I hope you got to see my video on the wire pumpkin wreath that I decided to try and make something else out of it other than a pumpkin. And I came up with a mummy idea. And since then, I've been thinking a little bit more about it. And I've come up with another idea for the pumpkin wreath that's not going to be a pumpkin. And this is going to involve having two Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath wires. And instead of putting them one on top of another, this time we're going to take one, kind of loop it behind. Let me see if I can line it up better. I'm going to line it up like this. And I'm going to be wiring this rim together, top and bottom, and to hold it like that, because is anybody seeing Frankenstein now? Look right here, there's the two screws that hold them together. <laughs> so this is what we're starting off with like this. Again, I'm not 100% sure how this is gonna go. It's in my head, so once again, watch through to the end before you make your material list. But I did end up, instead of going to get some green material, I was at a thrift shop and I found this tank top which is a great color for Frankenstein. It's very stretchy, and I think it'll work perfect to go around there. So that'll be one of the things you'll need, some green fabric. <clears throat> also, then we're gonna use some black felt, which will be part of his face. Uh, I think there's some white included on that. And if you saw my mummy YouTube, I had this spider that I was going to use, but I might stick him on this because I don't want him to go to waste. And then some pliers, some wires, some scissors, glue gun, and glue stick. So the areas that I secured with the wire was where the two top wires meet together and where the two bottom, well, top or bottom, it doesn't, doesn't matter, it turn either way. There, I also secured it, but then along where the stems go, I did secure it uh, on each side of that. Uh, also, let me see what you can say. There's where the pumpkin, it, it comes in on the stem at, from when you buy it. And same on this side, but this side of the circle of the pumpkin came out, which cut it a little shorter, this stem than this stem, and I want them the same length. So as you can see, where the pumpkin would normally have come out right there, I just took a pair of pliers and I bent it in just a little bit. These are not real, real sturdy, but it was enough without snapping that it allowed me to do that. So now I feel like I have it the same on both sides with the width of the stems that are, or the length that the stems are coming out. So now I'm gonna take the tank top that I bought and I'm going to stretch it around and hot glue it around the outside of the pumpkin. So before I glue this fabric on, I wanted to let you know it's a 19 by 14. As you see, it's a very stretchy, tank top that I got. I, I got it at Goodwill and I think I paid $4 for it. Um, and I probably should have kept it because look at that. It was from Chico's. <laughs> okay, so we got a Chico Frankenstein, I don't know. So I am gonna glue it around the edges and um, I'm gonna stretch it as much as I can so that you don't see a lot of the wire. But I also think if you do, if the wire does poke out from it, Frankenstein sometimes has a real bony kind of structure in his face, so I think that'll work with his character. Okay, stop, emergency, glue gun emergency. I had a funny feeling something like that was gonna happen, but I didn't wanna bring it up. And let me show you. If you glue the fabric to the back of the fabric, the pulling on this fabric, if you're gonna use a stretch material, and you don't have to use a stretch material, but you can see, it's gonna show where I just glued it uh, to the fabric. But if you glue it directly to the wire, then you're not gonna see that. So what I've done though, I didn't mention this, I kind of divided the, I figured out the center of the fabric and then glued it on each end of the center of the top and bottom. And then I'm gonna find the center this way and then I'm gonna pull and glue it but make sure you do not glue it to the fabric, only glue it to the wire. So 
Now what I've done is I've taken a piece of black felt and I've kind of cut a little jagged edge, which is going to be the front hairline. And the way I did that was I set that over a piece of that black felt up there. I just set it over that and cut out the hoop shape, moon shape, and then cut in these jagged little edges. And so what that's going to end up doing is it's going to end up sitting on the top of his head like that, which will be his hairline. Oh, I'll have to get a lot of these little pieces off that are starting to collect on the felt. But that's basically um, what we're working with as far as the hairline. And Frankenstein has a big forehead, so I'm going to kind of move this. It's hard to see right now, but I'm gonna kind of move it towards the back of the um, frame. Now I'm working on his eyes, and I want his eyes to kind of be looking off to the side because that's where I'm planning on putting the spider. So what you're going to do is cut two moon-shaped white pieces of felt, which is that, and then the two eyes. And you can kind of see they're not the exact shape. And then the, the outline of the eyes in black felt. And then my plan is this will be, I'm sorry, I'll be right back. I want to get this. I actually had the wrong piece. So my plan is, is to take a thin piece and I kind of want to make it go down in the corners and trace along the top of the eyes. Now, as you see, I did a little skinnier along here, left an edge. And then over here, I just made it a little wider, just so it's got a little character in his eyes. So I'm backing it up so you can see what I'm planning on doing with his eyes. So I'm going to be making a scar, which is pretty simple, just one long piece and two little ones sitting on top of it. And the thing that's great about felt is it does have a little ply in it where you can actually pull it if you want it to be skinnier, if you want it to kind of bend a little bit on an angle. It does have a little bit of give to it, so I'm going to make a little scar that's also going to be on his face. Now this kind of squiggly wavy thing is going to be his mouth. When you see the end result, you'll see how all of these things make sense. And once again, I did pull and stretch this as I needed to get a little bit longer or a little more curve in it. And this is this of a mouth is also going to have a couple little ends to it here and here. And then I think he needs to have some teeth. So what I did was cut some black on the back, his teeth on the front, and that's going to fit right in there. And his teeth are going to be to eat the spider that's going to be on the top of his head. Once again, when you see it put together, you'll see how it's all going to All right, work. so now it's I've got it all cut and sitting out. This is how it's going to go on the uh, green fabric. He's going to have a scar. There's more or less like his eyebrows, eyes covered uh, or lined with the black felt. I just cut a, cut a strip and I kind of pulled, like I said, and stretched it because you can get it to sit flat and curve like that. Of course, that's going to be his nose. And then will come his mouth with his teeth. And I think that's kind of going to be how it's going to sit on his face. I may adjust it a little bit, but I think that's looking pretty good.
So now I have him on my kitchen island, basically like I think he's going to be um, on the pumpkin wire. Uh, as you see, he's looking up at the spider. He's got his teeth out. He's ready to eat it, unlike the mummy that's scared of it. I have his scar glued together, everything done. I've kind of encouraged the um, eyebrow or the top of the eye to kind of be curved down so he kind of looks like he's peeking out a little bit at the spider. But now I'm going to uh, put the hair on the mummy frame and then we'll be gluing these parts on. Okay, I think we got Dracula coming around here. <laughs> He's got everything but a face. <laughs> and we already have the face built. It's just a matter of placing it on here where we need it. And then I have to decide what I'm gonna do with the two screws on the side of his head. I haven't figured that out yet. So I'm gonna place all of his uh, eyes, nose, mouth, and the scar. And then we'll decide where we're gonna put the spider and how this is gonna be handled with the screws in the side of his head, which are really nothing but the pumpkin stems. So I've placed his eyes on there and I'm going to just kind of tack him down. I wanted to show you what I'm doing so that you could see about trying to hide this wire I actually stuck the wire through all of this and then I went inside the spider. What I was trying to do is catch two of these bars. So I've got this top wire on the top bar. I put it through his skeleton body and then put it back. I know this is really hard to say but back through there. So you can barely see where it comes in and it goes out. And unfortunately, a little bit of it's gonna show. So then in the back, I don't wanna let go, but I'll show you it in one second here. I'm gonna, there. I'm gonna twist that I got it around both of those wires. And I'm gonna take some pliers I'm going to twist that, clip it off, and then I think he'll be uh, on there pretty sturdy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so entertained by him, but I'm entertained by him. <laughs> he's just great. Doesn't he look like he's just drooling trying to get to that spider? But I did forget that I need to do something with the screws, sometimes they're in their neck, but I've seen in some cartoon characters they are actually in the sides of their head. So I'm gonna figure out something that will work to kind of show that there's screws in the side of his head. And then I'll let you know what it is. I've decided I'm gonna stick with the felt and I've just cut like a little rectangle piece. I've uh, started to glue it on the inside here. And then I'm going to wrap it. I guess I should I'll glue the bar at the top like that. Glue that down. I've glued it on this right here. And then I'll put some glue. I know it's hard to see because it's dark, but just kind of glue it around and then I'm going to fold it over and overlap it right there, like that. That covers it. And then uh, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like right now. And I do have a little flap there. So I'm just going to trim off the back so that it's not so thick and flap that over like get this a little more clipped in. So I'm just gonna put some glue on that. I know it's hard to see, I'm sorry, but you know, just cover it. <laughs> 
Just make sure you cover it, that's all. And I'm holding that down till that glues. So he's upside down, but you can see it's nicely finished like that. I'm always worried about the back of everything, but on this one, I don't really think it matters. And I just clip off a little bit that's hanging off. And you can see on the front. By the way, I just love these little Fister scissors. I use them for seam ripping. I mean, they are the greatest, sharpest, pointiest little scissors, and I love them. Uh, I highly recommend them for sewing, for, you know, just crafts. I was trying to get a little bit of uh, hot glue that I got on areas of the felt that didn't look good. And it just, it, they're just so easy to work. So please make, I, I was forever before I bought those and I should have had them years ago. I really should have had them years ago. There we go. Luckily I have my glue gun on low, otherwise I would be burning my fingers. Okay, I just got my nails done today. So I might be pulling it off with some glue. <laughs> oh, well, it's worth it. Crafting is worth it. Um, okay, so we've got them him like this right now. And uh, I'm thinking about taking some jute and wrapping it around the ends to make it more look like a screw head. I don't have anything silver really in my house that would look like that, but I did do a little sample of it a minute ago and I kind of liked the jute coming around it. So I'm just gonna wrap some jute on the ends and kind of make the nail head and then we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> so after wrapping some felt around here and then I wrapped just wrap jute around the ends to make it look like a little more of a screw. I, I just couldn't think of anything. Actually, it's 11.30 at night. I couldn't think of anything at this point to do with it. But you know what? He's so funny. To me, he's so funny. I don't even think you notice what the screws are even made of. I don't know why I'm so entertained by him, but I think he's just drooling, like I said, to get hold of that spider. So he, this is another option, you know, to, to use for your Dollar Tree pumpkin frame. And of course, we're not gonna be paying a dollar for it anymore. So get over there and get as many as you can. Because as you see, you can make more than just a pumpkin out of this thing. And don't forget, <laughs> there's his buddy back there who's not looking forward to eating the spider, but he is scared to death of the spider. Down below, I will also put the link to making my uh, mummy out of uh, the pumpkin wire frame. And as you can see, they make a great pair. And thumbs up, I hope. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. And if you're really daring, you'll subscribe to my channel. Happy Halloween.